Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at the next operation that we're going to add to the vector space, um, and that is the cross product. Okay, so similar to the dot product, it's a way of combining two vectors together. Um, but with the dot product, we combine the two vectors to produce a real number. So vector u dot vector w gave us some, some real number. With the cross product, we're going to take two vectors and we're going to produce a third vector. Okay, so there are some differences between the two. Okay, so let's start off with the definition. Okay, so given two vectors, let's say A and B, we define the cross product as, and then we write it as A cross B. Okay, so this cross here doesn't mean the cross from multiplication. This is a cross between two vectors. Okay, so please don't mix up your multiplication crosses with your cross product crosses. Okay, they're two different things. Okay, so that's the symbol we use. And this is going to give us a third vector given by the determinant. Now, instead of numbers for the first row, we put in the R hat, J hat, and K hat. Okay, so it's not like your standard determinant with numbers. Um, but it's similar to, to how you would work it out. Okay, but the first row is R hat, J hat, K hat. Then for the second row, you put the components of A. So let's call that A1, A2, A3. And then for the third row, you put the components of B. So that's going to be B1, B2, B3. Okay, and then we calculate the determinant as if all of this was just numbers. So that means we're going to have I hat, okay? And then you block off that column, you block off that row, you get A2, B3 minus A3, B2. Okay, so that's your first bit. Okay, then you have minus J hat, okay? As if you were doing a normal determinant, you just think about that J hat as a number and you just carry on. Then it will be A1, B3, minus a three b one plus k hat and then again you just block off that column block off that row you get a one b two minus a two b one okay. so now these elements here this um, in yellow this one in blue and one in green they become the new components of our vector yeah, the, the third vector there. So you could write this as a vector being a2, b3, minus a3, b2 as your first component, because that comes with the i hat. So that's the first component. Uh, then the second one, you got the minus sign. So we need to flip the order there. So it's going to be a3, b1, minus a1, b3. That's the second component for the vector. And for the last component, we get A1, B2, minus A2, B1. Yeah. And that's our resulting vector from this cross product. So, uh, so A cross B, A cross B. Okay, um, are there any questions about this definition? Okay, uh, let's have a look at the properties of the cross product now. Okay, so properties.
Okay, number one, we have a cross a is equal to zero, the zero vector. So if you have any vector cross product with itself, we get the zero vector. Okay, number two, a cross b is equal to minus b cross a. So remember with the dot product, it was commutative. A dot B was the same thing as B dot A. Here we get a minus sign, minus sign there. So we say it's anti-commutative. Yeah. So if you swap the order, you get a minus sign. Okay, number three, we have a distributivity with the plus. So A cross, B plus C, okay, very similar to what we had with the dot product. This is going to be A cross B, and then we have the plus A cross C. Okay, so we have distributivity like with the dot product. And last one, again, we have distributivity, but with the scalar multiplication instead of the plus. So if you have K times A cross B, we can take the scalar out. So this is the same thing as K times A cross B. Okay, so those are the two types of distributivity that we have. Um, and if we combine these two properties, we say that this is linear or linearity. Okay, so the cross product satisfies linearity. Okay, and number five, we have um, another property called the Jacobi identity. And that is if you have three cross products, uh, or sorry, two cross products, so A cross B cross C. Okay, so if you've got two of them in a row, we have the following identity. So A cross B cross C. So the brackets mean that we do B cross C first. Okay, so remember, um, your brackets and associativity. So the B cross C, you do that first, and then you do the A cross, whatever that result is. So if you have this, plus B cross A cross C, oh, sorry, C cross A, other way around, C cross A, plus C cross A cross B, we get zero. Okay. So this is called the Jacobi identity. Okay, so just a little note with this Jacobi identity. Okay, so just a little note here to uh, remember the cross product is not associative. Okay. So when we did the dot product, we found that that was, um, so, so uh, with your normal multiplication, sorry, uh, we know that that's associative, same with the matrix multiplication, but this type of multiplication is not associative. So if you have A cross B cross C like this, if you do the B cross C first, so you put the brackets to show that you're doing this one first, this is not the same as doing A cross B and then cross C. Okay, you can't just move the brackets around. It's not associative. Okay, however, it does follow the Jacobi identity. Yeah, and just a little note with that. Distributivity plus linearity plus the Jacobi identity means that R3 Hey, remember the, the three tuples that we've been working with? With that vector addition we uh, came up with, 
the scalar multiplication and the cross product. So if we have R3 and these three operations, right, is a Lie algebra. Okay, so we won't be doing anything with Lie algebras, but if you are interested in uh, looking at more, uh, more of this, you can look up Lie algebras, and that will tell you a bit more about that. Okay, so this is just a little extra thing that you can look at. Okay, so this cross product uh, with R3 and all the other operations we've done so far, that's an example of a Lie algebra. Okay, but we won't be looking at other Lie algebras, we'll just be looking at this particular one. Okay, so these are the properties of the cross product. Um, are there any questions about these properties? Okay, um, so the first law homework exercise for today is to prove these five properties. Prove these five properties. Okay. Okay, so that's the properties. Um, and then I'll put up the solutions later on so you can have a look at um, how to prove these. Uh, but the first one that posts the solutions, um, as always, you'll get your, um, your bonus marks for that. Okay, so let's have a look at an example and then we'll have a look at the geometric view um, of the cross product, like we did with the dot product. So example, let A be equal to one, zero, minus one, and let, uh, sorry about that, got cut off. Uh, let me just share the screen again. Okay, uh, that should be back. Okay, so we're just going through a quick example here. So we've got the vector A, one, zero, minus one. We've got the vector B, two, one, three. And we want to calculate the cross product. Now, remember the order matters. So if we're trying to find A cross B, we're gonna get um, some value. If we find B cross A, we're gonna get minus uh, that value. So the order does matter. Okay, so please remember that. Okay, so we want A cross B, so A first. So this is going to be equal to, we write, the, write it out as a determinant where the first row is R, J, K. You just treat it, treat it as numbers for now, do the determinant, um, and then you can see what the result is. So A is one, zero, minus one. B is two, one, three. Yeah, and we just, work out the determinants as normal, um, and that will give us what the components are gonna be. So we put down R, and then we look at the determinant of the little sub matrix. So that's gonna be zero minus minus one. So that will be plus one minus J. Again, we block out that column, block out that row. We're gonna get three minus minus two. So that's going to be three plus two, which will be five. And then plus K. Again, we block out that column, we block out that row, and that's going to be one minus zero, so that's just one. Okay, so we can write this a bit neater as I hat minus five J hat plus K hat. Okay, and remember there is a one in front of the I hat, and there's a one in front of the K hat. Now you can leave it like this, that's perfectly fine. Remember last time we showed that if you have a vector, you can write it as the sum. Okay, we called it that uh, basis expansion. Or if you want to write it as a tuple, you can write it as one minus five, one. Okay, both are entirely correct. I don't mind which one you uh, 
uh, you leave your answer as. Okay, um, any questions about this example? Okay, so it's pretty easy to, to calculate. And if you calculate B cross A, um, you should get minus one, five, minus one, because we know that there's just that minus difference between the two orderings. Okay, so just uh, let's put that down here. Okay, so you can go ahead and calculate B cross A, um, and you'll see that this is going to be minus one, five, minus one because we know that A cross B is minus B cross A. Okay, so if you wanna calculate the other way around, you just put the minus sign. Okay, um, any questions so far? Okay, so not so bad. All right, let's have a look at the geometric view. Okay, uh, I've got a question here. What determines uh, the operation sign to be used? So um, this minus sign is just because we swapped the ordering because it's anti-commutative. So try it out. Try calculate this B cross A. Okay, and you'll see that you're going to get minus whatever we had before here. Okay, so there's always just that minus sign if you swap the order. Okay, let's have a look at the geometric view of this. Okay, so we looked at the geometric view of the dot product and we found that dot product uh, was used for those projections. So if you have two vectors and you find the dot product, um, that's the same thing as looking at one of the vectors being projected onto the other vector. Okay, if you want to look at it in terms of like uh, pictures or diagrams like that. With the cross product, we have something uh, different. If we have a vector A and a vector B like this, so let's say this is A, and this is B, then A cross B is a third vector. Remember, cross product gives us another vector. And it is perpendicular to the plane that A and B are in. So it's going to be, sorry, a vector like this, and it's perpendicular to those two. So this is our A cross B. Okay. So that is um, the resulting vector that we get. Now, if we swap the order and we do B cross A, that's going to give us minus the vector. So instead of pointing up, it's going to point down. So we can look at this one here. Again, it's perpendicular, but this is going to be B cross A. Yeah, it's going to be the other way around. Okay, so how do we determine the direction of the cross product? So if I just give you A and I give you B in like a picture like this, and I'll say in which direction will A cross B uh, go in? So the way we do that is using the right hand rule. So the direction of A cross B given by the right hand rule. And so um, if you did physics in high school, you'll be familiar with the right hand rule. So you use that rule with magnetic induction. So if you've got the magnetic field and you've got the current, um, it shows you in which direction the force is going to be, right? You call that the right hand rule. Um, this is where it comes from. It comes from the cross product. So we can do the same thing here. If you imagine um, holding your right hand out with your fingers like this, so you've got um, 
Okay, so you're something like that. So you, you got your fingers out, so you're pointing in this direction. Yeah, so you, you're pointing there, and then remember your, your thumb sticks up here. Yep, so if you're pointing in that direction, you've got your thumb up, then that defines where this vector goes, or this finger. So this finger slash vector. So this finger slash vector is defined from the other two. Okay, so you just uh, put your hand in that sort of orientation, um, and then that will tell you in which direction the cross product is going to be. So the one that you're pointing in, so that direction, that's going to be our A. Okay, the other one, that's going to be our B. And then if you point in those two directions, then your thumb is going to point in the direction of A cross B. So um, at the top, the thumb is here, we get A cross B. Okay, so that is the uh, right hand rule for determining the direction of A cross B. Okay, so you point in the direction of A, the other finger goes in the direction of B, and your thumb points in the direction of A cross B. Okay, and we know that if you just flip that around or you put the minus sign, that is if you do the other um, ordering. So A cross B gives you um, your thumb pointing up. If you do B cross A, then your thumb's going to be pointing down okay, because of that minus sign. Okay, so that's how you find the direction of A cross B. Um, there's another thing we can look at with regards to this geometric view, um, and that is finding the area of a parallelogram using the cross product. Okay, so finding the area of a parallelogram using the cross product. Okay, so that's a nice little geometric application of the cross product. So let's say we've got a parallelogram like so. Okay, remember opposite sides parallel, opposite sides equal, and so on. So we've got this parallelogram here, and we want to find its area. Now, what we could do is, you know, just like you would have done in high school, you break it up like this, you find the length and the perpendicular height and so on. Uh, but we want to do it using, uh, using vectors. So instead of that, which Sorry, uh, let's just draw that a bit better. Okay, so what we do is we draw one vector along one of the sides. So let's say this bottom side here, we've got a vector. Uh, sorry about that, got cut off again. Let me just uh, share the screen. Okay, uh, that should be back now. Okay, so what we've got here is a parallelogram and I've drawn a vector A along the one side of the parallelogram. And then I've got a vector B along the other side. Okay, so that is vector B. And we want to use these two vectors to find the area contained in the parallelogram. Okay, so let's say we've got this area here. How do we find that area? Now, the nice thing is this area in red here, so the area is equal to the magnitude or the norm of the cross product. A cross B. Yeah, 
So if I give you a parallelogram with these vectors going in either direction like this, then the area is just the length of whatever the cross product is. Okay, that gives you the area. Now that's, the, uh, that's how you find the area of the parallelogram. We can also use this to find an area of a triangle if we just imagine the triangle as being half of a parallelogram. Um, so let's say we've got a triangle like this, something like that. Okay, we wanna find the area of this triangle. Again, we've got the two sides of the triangle given by these vectors. So we've got vector A going along the bottom. Um, oh, let's use the same colors as before. Okay, so let's say we've got A going along the bottom here. And B going along the other side here. That's B. We know that A cross B will give us the full parallelogram area. So if I just fill that in, it's going to look something like this. Okay, that's going to give us the full area. But if we only want this triangle part, then that's just going to be half of the area. Okay, so the area of the triangle, which is half the parallelogram, is just going to be one half of A cross B. Okay. So these are two helpful formulae um, that we're going to be using um, later on. Okay, so let's have a, a quick example of finding the area of the parallelogram, um, and then we'll carry on with the examples tomorrow. Okay, so we've got a parallelogram, something like that. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, and remember, this is in... Uh, three three dimensions of space, right? Okay, so if you imagine these three points here, they all have X, Y, Z uh, points. Okay, so um, just to simplify things, let's say this first point, P, is given by zero, zero, zero. Okay, so we're saying one of the corners is at the origin. Uh, let's say this other point, Q, is at one, two, zero. And R, let's say that is at two, one, one. Okay, something like that. Now we don't need to specify the third point because remember from the properties, we know that the distance PQ will be the same as the distance R, let's say this is S. Okay, so if we know the distances, we know the angles, we can automatically find out um, what that point is. So we don't really need to know what that is. Okay, so we've got the three vertices or the three corners of this parallelogram. And the first thing that we need to do is find those vectors that go along the edges. Okay, so we need this vector that goes along this bottom edge and we need this vector that goes along the top, uh, the side edge over there. Okay, so let's say this bottom one is A and the, the side one is B. Okay, so how do we find that vector? Well, we're going to use that vector addition that we looked at um, in the first lecture on this, uh, but we're gonna do it a bit backwards. So instead of adding vectors to get A, we're going to subtract them. So how do we do that? Well, this vector from P to Q, we can find by taking the vector going to Q minus the vector going to P, that will give us that one there. Uh, that will give us A. So just as a little um, illustration here. Sorry. Just as a little illustration of this, if we've got A, B, and C, remember how the vector addition worked. Okay, if you've got A plus C, you're going to get B. If I do vector addition, but we could also write this as C is equal to B minus A. Okay, I just took it over to the other side. 
And now I can use vector subtraction to find out what the C is. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. So A is going to be the vector going to Q minus the vector going to P. Okay, so Q minus P, that gives us the vector along that edge. So this is going to be 1, 2, 0, minus 0, 0, 0. Okay, and the nice thing about um, having the origin at P is that we're just subtracting the zero vector, um, that doesn't do anything. So we have one, two, zero. Next, we have our vector B. That's going to be the vector going to R minus the vector going to P. So R minus P. Okay, so R is given by two, one, one. And P is given by zero, zero, zero. Okay, just to make things easier. If we subtract them, we're going to get two, one, one. Good, so we've got our two edge vectors. So A and B, these are our edge vectors. And now we're just going to use that formula that we had. The area is equal to the magnitude of A cross B. So let's first find out what A cross B is. So A cross B, we use that determinant uh, rule. So R, J, K. We put A first, that's one, two, zero. We put B second, so that's two, one, one. And we find the determinant. So that's going to be R hat, two minus zero, minus J hat, one minus zero, plus k hat, one minus four. So that's going to give us a vector, two r minus j, and then minus three k. Okay, so that's the vector, but what we want is the magnitude of the vector. So the area is the magnitude of a cross b, so remember how we do that. That's just the length of the vector. So it's going to be the square root of two squared plus one squared plus three squared. Okay, so that's the square root of four plus one plus nine. Um, so that's root 14. Okay, so that's going to be the area of this parallelogram. Okay, so that's all this area here. Okay, and it's root 14. Okay, um, are there any questions about this? Okay, um, so let me leave you with another homework problem. Yep, so now let's look at finding the area of a triangle. So let's say we've got a triangle like this. Okay, so it's in three, three dimension, three dimensional space. So we've got P at one, one, sorry, one, one minus one. Q is at three, two, zero. And R is at one, zero, one. Okay, so this triangle is somewhere in three-dimensional space. Here are the vertices of the triangle. Find the area of the triangle. Okay, so I want this area here. Okay, um, so that is the second part of the homework for today. Okay, so um, that's it for today. We're going to carry on with more of these um, examples tomorrow. If you do have any questions, please just email me uh, or you can post your questions on the WhatsApp group. So I'm there to help as well. Um, and remember that the tutors are also on the WhatsApp group uh, so they can help as well if I don't see your message.
Okay, uh, but we will carry on with all of this uh, tomorrow. Okay, and remember that the test one is coming up as well. Okay, so uh, one of these lectures is going to be a revision session for test one coming up. Okay, so I'll see all of you tomorrow. Bye everyone.